Our lesson from to, for today is from the book of John, the fourth chapter, verses 7 through 15, 28 through 30, 39 through 41. And of course, to get a good, to get a good understanding, it's a very good, interesting chapter, so you probably need to read it all the way. But <clears throat> as, as, it, uh, as followers of Jesus, we should be eager to share the gospel with anyone willing to listen. Yet some have created barriers to hinder relationships. Uh, in our lesson today, Jesus broke down the barriers. It says, a certain, a Samaritan woman came to draw water and Jesus asked her for a drink. He was alone at the time. The disciples had gone to buy food. So Jesus was sitting down there at Jacob's well. <clears throat> and he said, he was alone. The disciples had gone into town to buy food. And, and she was startled when he asked her for a drink. When he said anything to her, she was startled. And she said, and she was taken by surprise. She said, now, how come you or Jew are asking me a Samaritan for a drink? Jesus had no, the Jews had no dealing with the Samaritan, and usually they didn't even speak to them. So she said, you know, she was puzzled, like, why are you asking me this? Jesus said, if you knew what I knew, if you, if you knew what gift God has for you, said, and who I am, you'd be asking me for a drink. Mm -hmm. She said, she said, sir, you don't have anything to grow with, not even a bucket. That this well is deep. So how are you going to get the living water? And she said, he said, she said, said, besides, are you greater than our ancestor Jacob, who dug this well and drank from it, he, his sons, and his livestock. And then he passed it on down to us. And he said, anyone who drank this water will be thirsty again, he said. But anyone who drinks the water I give him will never thirst again. Becomes like a spring within them, watering them forever with eternal life. She said, Sir, say, give me this water so I won't be thirsty again and I won't have to come back to this place, come back to this well again and again. And he said, she said, she left the water hot. She went back to the city and she told the people what had happened. Said, come on, come see a man who told me everything I did. And could this be the Messiah? Um, and they went to see for themselves. Many believed because of um, her testimony. But when the Samaritan came to Jesus, they asked him to stay with them. And he, he spent two days. And while he was there those two days, many more came to him and changed their lives. Now, as we look at this, as we look at this, some of the, the main thing in the story, mm -hmm. on his way to Galilee, 
Now Jesus didn't have to go to Samaria. And most of the Jews, if they were born, they went way around the other way. They went kind of the long way around so they could avoid just being near the Samaritan. But Jesus, Jesus knew there was a need in that. He went through Samaria because he knew that there was something that needed to be done there. <clears throat> he passed through Samaria, and, and I said, most of the, the Jews wouldn't even dream of walking through Samaria. No, 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 not through Samaritan territory. They hated the Samaritan just that bad. They would completely avoid the whole area by crossing the Jordan in a, in a roundabout route. They, they'd go the extra mile just so they didn't have to do it. And now when we look at, um, and, and, and he said, the great need for the love forced him in that direction. Jesus love, it loves everybody. And so when there's a need, he goes where the need is. And he said, around, around noon, he reached the city of Sychar. Sychar. He came to Jacob's well. And, and look at the story. Now, he reached there about noon. And I don't know where she went every day at noon or per, to avoid them or whether that particular day was a day for her to go at noon. But nevertheless, when she went there, she, they said that, that it was a long walk every day, mm -hmm. a long walk to the well. And it was a daily thing for each of the Samaritan women. So, and, and most of them, like I said, that they socialized with each other. But this woman did because she knew the lifestyle that she was living. She knew how people felt about her, so she didn't, she didn't bother. And then, you know, and, and perhaps this came, you know, at, she came, she probably came at noon and said, I'm going to go, and when they finish, I'm going to and get my will. Then I won't have to even see them. I won't even have to hear them talk about me mm. or nothing. I'm just going to do that. And, and uh, <clears throat> she she felt that if anybody else was there, that they would go, whatever they were saying, she just knew they were going to be talking about her because she knew the lifestyle she lived. But he asked her for a drink of water. And she was just so startled. She said, hmm, <laughs> this just don't make sense. She said, you know the Jews has no dealing with uh, Samaritans. So, so you know that. And, and see, the racial problem between the two groups, it was not anything uh, new. And it was not a private thing. It was publicly known that the Jews hated the Samaritans. It's kind of like we are today. They, they mostly hated Samaritans. They, they said it was a mixed race. They hated them mainly for the reason that the Samaritans couldn't do anything about it. How can we do anything about what color we are? And God created us all. So if he if he wanted, he wants us all to live together and be in, be in harmony, work together with each other. He created us different. Uh -huh. But what I'm saying is that we got the, these people, the Jews treat the Samaritan just like we, uh, a lot of people treat us. Uh -huh. We can't help what color we are. That's right. You need to take that up with God. Uh -huh. But people dislike it. Don't know us. Don't know what we're capable of doing. Don't know how we can contribute to society and all. But they don't like us. They decide they don't like us. And the Jews were this way. And, and, and it was, a, you know, it was a public thing. And, and she couldn't understand why this Jew was talking to her. And the answer to her question, when he asked her, he said, uh, if you knew what I knew, if you knew the gift of God who's asking you for a drink, you'd be asking him. And he would give, be giving you the living water. Mm -hmm. But she did not quite get that. Jesus, he, he didn't, Jesus was it to him. She said, he's got nothing to draw water with. Well, how do you think you, how do you think you're going to get it out of, out of the way? You know, mm -hmm. she was thinking on one level. But the, since she was talking to God, you know, she didn't quite get it. She didn't quite get it. So what is he going to, 
How in the world is he going to draw water? How in the world are you going to get this water you're talking about? He ain't got nothing to work with. The man is empty hand. Mm -hmm. So she, she, didn't, she didn't quite get that. Mm -hmm. He ain't got no equipment. And she wanted to pull. She said, well, wonder where you're going with this. You tell her how I can give you the living water and all that stuff. It's mm -hmm. like, you know, it, it didn't register with her. It, it was not on her radar at all. She said, well, she didn't understand it, but she kept right on talking to him. And he was talking, he kept talking to her. And she said, <clears throat> she, she said, well, she didn't know what else to do, but he had a pen there. And she, he kept talking to her, and she's talking about this living water. And says, she said, you know, I want that. So I won't have to come here every day and draw this water. But see, she, she didn't have it. She didn't quite get it because what Jesus was telling her, it, it, it was not the same thing as she thought. Right. He was talking about, he compared to Jacob's well. You got to come every day and get your water. Mm -hmm. But then he was saying the living water he gave her, she would not have to be thirsty again. Mm -hmm. But she was under the pressure he's talking about physically all the time. And Jesus was talking on another level. He was, and she was saying, you give me this water so I won't have to come here and drink no more. Mm -hmm. So I won't have to come to this well every day. And, uh, so he said, uh, um, and she saw, so, see, also asked him, she said, now, are you greater than Jacob? And she didn't know who he was. So, are you greater than Jacob? Uh, Jacob had this way of doing. He, his family, and his livestock. That's, that's where they got their water from. And uh, are you going to be, are you much greater than he is? <clears throat> and, and he said, Jesus told us that everyone, that drinks from this get thirsty again and again. And anyone who drinks the water I give will never thirst again. At that point, she still didn't quite get it all because she asked him to give her the living water. And so she was expecting a well somewhere where he could go, uh, another physical well. She didn't know altogether what he was talking about. And, and she said, uh, <clears throat> She said, I, don't, I want that. I want that so I don't have to come here every day. And, you know, and at that point, she still didn't get it because she asked him to give her living water so she would not have to thirst again and have to make the trip. But Jesus told her, so then Jesus told her, he switched the conversation on her. He told her some personal things. And mm -hmm. then it started sinking in. Mm -hmm. He told her some things that only she would know about herself. And she said, and at that point, the disciples coming back and they looking at Jesus like, didn't say anything, but Jesus knew what was on their mind. He looking at him like, what is our, what is our Lord doing? Here he is talking to this Samaritan woman. What, what's going on? But they didn't say anything to Jesus. And I, I, I imagine the woman got so confused and she felt uncomfortable when the disciples came back, so she probably said, you know, I'm going to leave. She, she left her water pot, and she went off, went to the community. Now, when she went to the community, she said, y'all, let me tell you something. Says, uh, look, I'm, I met a man. I met a person. He didn't put me down. He didn't low rate me. Mm -hmm. so he told me some things. Only he would know. Said, and so, you know, you, you just you just got to come see this man. And uh, someone said, now, are you sure you know what you're talking about? You see, because of a reputation, uh, even among Samaritan men, nobody really wanted to believe her. They just didn't seem to believe her. But she was trying to tell them, That's, I, I know something now that I didn't know before. Y'all come on, come on. And let me show you. He said, come see this man. Come see this person. You, you, just, you just got to see for yourself. I, I began to believe now he's the Messiah. So I want you to go and you see for yourself. And then you can decide. Mm -hmm. So they, they said, I don't know. I, I don't know about that. Uh, uh, someone was kind of bragging and she said, come on, y'all. Well, what's the matter with you? You, you need to see this. And they took out after her, 
They all went back to see Jesus. Mm -hmm. And from the time they went there, they saw some changes. They saw some things that, that what he taught them. And then they said, don't go. Can you stay with us just a little bit longer? Well, Jesus stayed two days with them. And, but, and during that time, so many people came to him that would not otherwise would not have known. See, when she went back to the village, she was really doing evangel evangelizing work. She went there and she told them, y'all come see, come on, come on, see this man who told me everything I did. And one of the folks, when she first told them that, come see a man who told me everything I did, one of them said, huh, not a pretty story, is it? <laughs> but see, that's always someone who says that. She's excited about the fact that he must be the Messiah because he told her things no one else could. But someone wants to put a damp on that and say, huh, not a pretty picture. <laughs> said, yeah, really? So she was excited. She came and she told them. And so when they too met God, met the Messiah, they was excited. And they said, wow. But you see, when because of her reputation, they want to give her a hard time. And because of her reputation, they didn't quite want to believe her. Anyway, they, they, they didn't think she had, she knew what she was talking about. And besides, they figured she met another man. But when she went to the well, she didn't, she didn't try to flirt with God, with the Messiah. He was sitting there. She went there. She had a lot on her mind. She wanted to get that water, and she wanted to get back to the village. But she didn't, she didn't flirt with him. When Jesus came, when she saw him, she didn't speak. She didn't say nothing because normally they don't speak to each other. Mm -hmm. So she knew that. <laughs> he wouldn't care anyway. He's a Jew. He don't speak to me. So that's what she thought about. Mm -hmm. And she said, well, she didn't say nothing, but Jesus spoke to her. He's the one that broke the ice. He spoke to her. So give me a drink of that water. Mm -hmm. and, and she, you know, from then on, things just started happening. And she said, you know, as you look at this and you think about uh, Jesus came along, the law at that time was saying she was just an outcast. And her work, her hobby was not pretty, I grant you that. And that's why so many of the women in the village were mad with her and because the, her, her, their husband, she had worn over all of them husbands. She had five husbands. And at that time, she was living with someone who was not a spouse. Mm -hmm. So the women didn't like her. I guess they know, you know, any minute they could lose their husband. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of understandable, too. Mm -hmm. But what I'm saying is, sometimes, you know, when, when God getting ready to change us, sometimes he gets the one who's done some of the worst things you can think of. Mm -hmm. And he changes them. And he brings them in. And then when he does, you kind of like, I don't, I don't believe that. Uh, either when they come into the church and, oh, Lord, here comes so-and-so. But you don't know what God been doing to them. That's right. And why they was, you know, why just with them and God. Mm -hmm. And this woman was a perfect, it's a perfect example. You don't know what God was doing. To, they didn't know what the people in the village did not know what God was doing to this woman. And, and, but when she comes back excited, they saw a great joy in her. Mm -hmm. But still, somehow, somebody, I don't care what you do, somebody's always like going to kick it. Mm -hmm. and, and they said, oh yeah, he told you everything? <laughs> not a pretty picture, was it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> not, a, not a pretty story. All that stuff, you know. But, but she kept on. Mm -hmm. she, she was so excited, she didn't let none of that, that mess bother her. Mm -hmm. She just wanted them to come. She, she was doing her disciples' work. Like, come on, let us all go mm -hmm. and let us learn something. Let us see a man who can, who just, this man told me everything. There's no telling what he could tell y'all. Come on, let's go mm -hmm. and let's go and see this. But, uh, and, and she said, uh, and, and, and the story, the, the thing about it is, what, what is so good about it, you know, she, when she got that, she didn't just keep it for us. So she wanted to share it with someone else. She said, because she knows even though there might be others not living the lifestyle she lived, 
but she since he could tell her all that stuff, she, she needed to know somebody. Somebody else needed to know that that was a person. That was a man who could help me. That was the Messiah. Mm -hmm. See, the Jews and the Samaritans had been looking for the Messiah. Mm -hmm. And so she she believed that, you know, she said, I want to share this with everybody. And she could have just kept it to herself and say, God has blessed me. I'm going to do this, that, and the other. And just left it like that. Mm -hmm. But no, she was wide open. She went to the village. Y'all, come on. Mm -hmm. I got to tell you, so come see a person who told me everything I ever knew. Mm -hmm. And you know, that that's carried quite a bit of weight. Yeah. And, and so uh, he told the woman, said, uh, and they told the woman, and after, when she told them, they went, some of them went, followed the woman back to where Jesus was. And, and uh, they said, after three days, after two days when he stayed with them, they told the woman, said, you know, we believe on your word, said, but uh, now we've seen it for our sake. We don't have to take your word. We, we believe because of, on your say so before when you said he told you everything. Mm -hmm. Said, but since we have been with him, now we know. Mm -hmm. And now we know. Mm -hmm. And you see, the thing about it, Jesus brought two strong Jewish customs that day. Jesus didn't care what the people, what the custom was. He knew he wasn't supposed to be talking to a Samaritan. He knew all of that stuff. But but Jesus stepped over all that stuff for love. Because of love. And because there was a need. And so he said, the first barrier he broke was that, you know, said Jewish men never address in public, never address a woman in public. And the Jewish men weren't even supposed to be talking to the Samaritan women. The Samaritan women was considered, they treated them like they were, they were dirty. They were supposed to be less than. See, the women had a hard time in that day because they treated them like, um, the first of all, they were already less than the Jews. All the Samaritan, man or female, were less than the, than the Jews. And then within the Samaritan race, the women were lower than the Samaritan men. So they, you know, they called it. They had it bad all the way around. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, uh, and, and it says that uh, if, the, if the Jew was a rabbi, which is a teacher, or a religious, uh, or, or a religious teacher, said he might not even speak in public to his wife. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, that's kind of tight. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And then it says, you know he had to be somebody different because it said, no, no honest, hardworking Jew would drink from a vessel that they, that had been handled, they call it contaminated by Samaritan hands. Mm -hmm. So he broke down those barriers. And that is the thing that we've been living with all these hundreds of years. Our forefather, our parents, each generation has it a little bit easier in some ways. But there, but still, there are some things they still think that we are not capable of doing some of the things that they do. Mm -hmm. Now, with God's help, and we apply ourselves, we can do anything. That's right. We can yeah. conquer some of the stuff. But the first thing we have to do is, is to look to the healing. Yeah. We have to look to God. Then we have to uh, get together. We have to pray together. We have to stay together, mm -hmm. and, and we can and we can fight this thing that we're fighting, and don't have to have guns or anything. Else. Mm -hmm. We have the power. Mm -hmm. If we could use the power that we have, mm -hmm. we can move mountains. Mm -hmm. But we're not using the power because, first of all, we don't like each other enough to get together. That's right. Some things have got to change. Mm -hmm. But see. And whether we are, the, the salvation that Jesus offers, it crosses all the racial and the, and, and the sexual uh, boundaries. Mm -hmm. Don't make no difference whether you're male or female, black or white. Mm -hmm. When God gets ready to save you, he just reach out there and save you. Mm -hmm. And nobody can do anything about it. That's right. We're all God's children mm -hmm. and in need of grace and love. Mm -hmm. 
and see, by imitating Jesus' love for all people, <clears throat> when, when, we, when we see others, like people like ourselves, in need of grace and mercy, we will be, you know, we'll be looking, we'll be less likely to put barriers up to their salvation. And then, you know, through the, through the power of God, through the power, you know, we can come, to, we accept others, look at us made in the image of God, just like we are. And see, we have to, uh, so many times, <clears throat> a lot of us, you know, we've been taught, uh, we've been kind of, all our lives, kind of like, no matter what, you know, this one decided. See, with, even within our own race, many people, we have classes within our own race. Mm -hmm. and, and we decide that who's better than who. And, and, you know, we just need to, we just have to get it through our head. All of us belong to God. Amen. God made us. Mm -hmm. Now, he made us just the way he wants us made. Mm -hmm. He wanted one black, one white, one Asian, one Hispanic, all this stuff. Amen. That's what he wanted. Mm -hmm. He made that. And so nobody can change what he made. Amen. But Amen. once we realize that all of us are made in the image of God. That's right, Jim. Yeah, that, that all of us are made in God's image. So Amen. therefore, who am I to say, you know, this will put you in that class, a class under me. Or who are you to put me in a class under you? Mm -hmm. Oh, God, you don't do the classes. That's, that's not your job. That's right. Your job is to love each other. And Paul said, as much as possible, try to live together in harmony. Mm -hmm. So we got to realize that so many times, and we have to watch our own self because people have decided that certain ones belong in certain class. They ain't going to be this and they ain't going to be this. Mm -hmm. We don't know what God has in mind. Mm -hmm. And you see, as, as so many times, um, and so many times, as we look at, uh, <clears throat> as we look at the way this woman was, even the lifestyle she had, but when she found a different lifestyle that she knew was the right one, she didn't just keep it to herself. She wanted to y'all come. She wanted everybody else to come and share. She wanted to share it with you. Says, just let me tell you what happened to me. And then, you know, you, you, you come and see him for yourself. Mm -hmm. But uh, she was evangelizing. She wanted the uh, people to come see. She wanted somebody else to experience what she had experienced. Mm -hmm. and, and she was happy. And I imagine, you know, they said that. You know, she did not have, prior to that, she didn't have a relationship with God. Mm -hmm. Not a personal relationship with God. Mm -hmm. But after, after, after the Messiah, I'm sure she did. Mm -hmm. And you know, he can, uh, you can look at it and say, um, I can imagine her saying down the road, she knew by her knowing Jesus, down the road, she probably said, Lord, you know, whenever things come up, she knew how to go and have a little talk with Jesus. Mm -hmm. Before she didn't even know, but she had she was busy with the men in her life. Mm -hmm. But she could go and have a little talk with Jesus. And then as things went on, she could go and say, Lord, uh, I know whenever something comes up, Lord, she said, I'm not, she could say, I'm not what I ought to be, but I ain't what I used to be. So I got a made up mind. And Lord, I'm getting better all the time. Mm -hmm. I can imagine her doing that. It's no telling how great she was. Mm -hmm. The story doesn't tell us anything else about her, but she could have been really, really great. Mm -hmm. So that 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 is something for us to think about mm -hmm. when we are when we're doing. You know, some people, or even in our churches, everybody is not comfortable or not happy or however you want to call it. But we must do the work of the Lord. Yes. And once you do the work of the Lord, it speaks for it own sake. That's right. You can't do nothing with it. You know, you don't have to worry about it. Uh, is this what they want to hear? Or did I preach the right sermon? No, no, no. You walk the walk as you talk the talk. Mm -hmm. And you just do what you know you're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. And let your light shine. That's right. Because so 
somebody's always watching. Amen. And they're waiting. Many times they're watching and waiting for you to slip. Mm -hmm. And so they can have that against you. Mm -hmm. So the thing about it is, we just tell the Lord, say, Lord, you know, we ain't what we ought to be, but I ain't what I used to be. Amen. And I'm getting better all the time. Amen. Are there any comments? Yes, ma'am. I just want to thank God for everybody. I want to especially want to thank God for you this morning and giving that awesome lesson. As you were saying a while ago, you know, God made all colors the color he wants. So we don't need to get around here and read nothing about why we are black because God made us like he wants us to be. He made us in his own image. And like that lady was at the well when Christ was talking to her about water. See, he was, she didn't understand right at that time about he was talking about spiritual water. And, and what I'm looking, what, I, what I'm getting out of, okay, I'm going to give you this spiritual water so you can get your soul clean, your soul clean up mm -hmm. and turn back to me. And do the right thing and don't do those things no more. And then he went on to tell her, and he said something, and I think I remember saying, he told her about she had, she said, I don't have no husband. Mm -hmm. so, but he said, you have five, and neither one of them is yours. So what he wanted her to do is drink. We all need that spiritual water so we can clean up, turn back, and do the right thing, do as God will have us to do. Walk in a straight and narrow road. Mm -hmm. And you see, on this, uh, just like the title of the lesson, different but the same, we are all, God made us all different, different colors, different mm -hmm. height, different size, and all that stuff. But uh, all these different races that God has, mm -hmm. we're different as far as the world can see. Mm -hmm. But with God, we're all, all the same. Amen. All the same. Amen. We all got to go through the same stuff to mm -hmm. be saved. We are all the same when it comes to that. Mm -hmm. And he made us from his image. He made us like he wants mm -hmm. us to be made. Mm -hmm. So we got to be thankful for that. Yeah. He, he made us the same image he made the brown man, the white man, or whatever. That's We're right. all made in the same image. And he loves all of us equally. Yes, sir. He sees everybody out in the same spring. And he watch he watches over all of us. That's he, right. he lets us know, you know, that we are his own. But right. he, and he tells us things that 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 if we stop and listen to, you know, uh, it wouldn't have made sense before. But like the lady at the you know at the well, mm -hmm. at first he started talking to her about living water and she's thinking what are you going to do? You don't have any equipment to draw water, so what's the purpose of it? Uh, you know, like, what's the purpose of telling me? Because you don't have anything to draw it with. Mm -hmm. she, that, that's because she didn't know. She didn't know. She didn't have a personal relationship with Jesus, but she would have known mm -hmm. some things. But, but now, after she met the Savior, and after she went back to the village, that so she was up and down the street telling on their way to go back to the well, she was just telling people all over. Now look, you got y'all got to come, mm -hmm. y'all got to come. So come on and, and see. Come on, John. Come on, let's go see. Mm -hmm. She wanted the whole community to come out and see. Mm -hmm. And what she realized, what he was telling her, she was so happy she didn't know what to do. She was willing to change her yeah. lifestyle. See, that's mm -hmm. another thing. Whenever God uh, um, visit us. We have to be willing, if we need to be, we have to be willing to change. That's right. Sometimes, well, Lord, I want you, and I, I and you're good, but I ain't going to change. Now, there are some that were not ready to change. Right. And so we got to be willing and ready to change when God calls us to do something. Mm -hmm. And this woman, a better lifestyle she had, I imagine she would she had enjoyed herself for many years. So mm -hmm. just like that, she was ready to change. Mm -hmm. So that, that that's a good thing. Yes, right. Are there any other comments? I like to uh, what the uh, <clears throat> what the uh, author of the lesson said in the remembrance session of the uh, lesson today. Say that Jesus showed us what can happen 
if we are willing to set aside our differences and seek to worship the one true God. We also see what happens if we share that personal testimony with others. The gospel knows that there are differences between people and that everyone needs to know of God's love. Jesus died for all, Jews and Gentiles alike. If we share, God will do the picking. The scripture tells us that many more believe, meaning the initial sharing by the Samaritan woman was a start. Jesus shared with them close to deal. So, you know, when we lay aside our differences and we come together on one accord and to and we we seek to worship the true and living God, when we recognize Jesus as Lord and Savior, when we put self out of the way, we all have differences. And when we when we leave from here, those differences are still are still there. But when we are when we are worshiping. When we are serving, we come together for one common cause, and that is to lift up the name of our Lord and Savior Amen. Jesus Christ. And when we do that, then people's lives are changed. When they see discord, they they leave they leave the same. They don't they don't want to be a part of that. But when they see Christ, and this is what the woman at the well did, she went back and she said, "Come and see a man." Who told me all things. Yeah. And that's what we need to be about today. Telling men and women, boys and girls, come and see a man who can save you from your sins. Amen. Are there any other comments? Thank you for your awesome message. Keep on with that. Trustee Luke. Yes, yes, ma'am. Uh, can y'all hear me? Yes, ma'am. I, I hear a lot of noise. Well, I hear you. Okay, I feel like the 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 water from the well was to clean up on the inside, so that you would try to live more relaxed him, and you wouldn't want to do the things that you had done. Like he told her about all the things. That was that she had done. Uh -huh. Well, the little one would clean her up so that she would not want to do those things again. Mm -hmm. Yes, he yeah. Which well are you talking? You talking about Jacob's well? She said he, the living water. The living water that he offered. Yeah, the living water that he offered was going to be beyond anything that you could even imagine. And she took a little while to get it, but once she got it, that's what she wanted. Right, which was the living water that he told her about. Uh huh. Are there any other? Are y'all understanding me? Huh? So are y'all understanding me? Because I'm hearing a lot of mumbling and feedback. Well, we don't hear it on this end. Oh, okay. I do hear them but I got I got to hear Yeah. We don't hear any on this end, Sister Johnson. It'll be straightened out. But I'm talking it down like a, you can't unmute it. You can't hear it back up. Unmuted. I think echo just muted. So as we as we look at our lesson today, we can think about we know that we are we are different, but the thing about it, we're just as important to God as the other races so. are. Amen. You know, there's there's no difference, even though they got the Jews and they got the Gentiles. But you think about it, God made us all. Amen. He made us all, and he's concerned about us all. Mm -hmm. And we have just as much of a, a, a line to heaven as the next race does. Amen. All we have to do is band together 
and, and put aside our differences with each other. Mm -hmm. And once we band together, we can have power. Mm -hmm. And, and that's, what, that's what it's all about. Jesus broke the barrier when he talked to the Samaritan woman and saved her and the whole community and said many more would come to know him. Mm -hmm. Came and committed their life to him after they went and talked to him. So the whole community was, was new. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's some of the things that we have to do. And no matter how low we get, as Lee Wood used to say, God is still with us. Mm -hmm. And God would pick us up. Look how look how she was. He'll pick us up if we had to reach way down. So if there are, are there any other comments? If not, this concludes our Sunday school for the day. Amen. Amen. To those of you that are joining us on Free Conference Call, uh, the, uh, as Sister Johnson was saying, the most of this that she hears is because of the fact that the system we are able to pipe out a good audio from inside, but since we do not have someone sitting in a sound booth to adjust the sound, whenever you are talking, there's a feedback because of the limitations of our system. Uh, now, I, I encourage you to make an extra donation and put on there for uh, audio streaming, and I promise you, we can get all this straightened out. Thank you. Again, we want to thank you, uh, Trustee Wu. Thank each and every one for joining in. Uh, at this time, we we'll have the remark from the. Hello. Hello. Okay, we need to have the remark from the youth. If the youth have any remark this morning. We're waiting on this system. Oh, okay. <laughs> Good morning. Our lesson hand is Genesis chapter 24 this morning. The wide swap. And the lesson was that once you do wrong to other people, it comes back on you. So therefore, you in the first place, you need to treat people as you want to be treated. And that's what we learned, because Jacob had tricked his father, stole his brother's birthright. So therefore, it came back to him when he saw Rachel and wanted to marry Rachel, but he didn't get Rachel in the beginning. He got to be done. Amen. Amen. At this time, we have someone to respond from the dark class. God made no difference between none of us. Amen. And, uh, he come for us all. Amen. At this time, we have our remarks from the secretary. I mean, have our reading for a second. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Minutes of the Anderson Chapel Missionary Baptist in St. Stephen's Sunday Church School, the 19th day of March. In the year of our Lord, 2023. School will call to order by Deacon Ray May at 10 o'clock. Mother Barnes gave us two songs, but Amazing Grace was the one that I wrote down. Um, prayer was by Reverend Faison. Scripture for today comes from John 4, 7 through 15, 28 through 30, 39 through 41. The subject of the lesson is different, but the same. The main thought, John 4, 39. Total in attendance was 27. Total offer was $35.50. It's 27 in-house, um, and we'll make the corrections when I find out how many was online. Um, the lesson was reviewed for 33 minutes by Trustee Wooden. Closing remarks were made by Trustee Dupree and Deacon Ray May, and all your officers remain the same. Amen. 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 Amen.